I love this camera. Sony phones are a little different. Today, looking at the Xperia 1 Mark V, these camera apps are the least familiar phone camera apps on the market today. But getting the hang of a Sony is a lot like shooting on a proper mirrorless camera. You can keep it simple, or you can get into granular controls. Most people will be familiar with iPhone-style camera apps, controls on one side and a sliding menu of modes on the camera viewfinder. This is quick and convenient, but it's kind of terrible design. It often prevents you from focusing on the rightmost edge of your screen when shooting video, and if you add more controls to this layout, it blocks more of your viewfinder. Adjusting these controls, it's pretty easy to accidentally switch modes. Sony is one of the only companies not copying Apple in this respect, but that means we get a different collection of camera apps. Specifically, we have three separate apps, Photo Pro, Video Pro, and Cinema Pro. They each do what you think they would do based on the name, photography, video, and cinema cropped content, starting with Photo Pro. A thin strip on the left houses modes, menus, and a selector for camera lenses. The center is our viewfinder. It's wonderfully clean with a small strip at the bottom to show you shutter and ISO. Touching the display toggle on the left will show or hide a level and a histogram. Otherwise, almost nothing else will ever block or distract your view while composing a photo. Because the right side of the screen houses all the other camera options and controls we would need to shoot a photo. Right now, this is in full auto, and you can see the boxes grayed out for the controls the phone will manage for you. You can still toggle the drive mode for burst photos or to use your timer. The style of autofocus and focus area, flash controls, and whether you want the autofocus to aim for eyes, just faces, or to disable eye and face tracking entirely. It might be intimidating to have all of this on the screen the first time you see it, but you're not really interacting with much of it for every shot. You mostly just point the viewfinder at your subject and touch the shutter button. Reviewers who act like this is so difficult are basically just telling you that they're bad at photography and bad at technology. But let's take a look at a couple alternative modes. Sliding the left camera dial to program mode, we're still mostly shooting in auto, but we get a little more control over exposure. Looking at the boxes on the right, now we can adjust our ISO, we can change our metering mode, we can add creative look filters, adjust white balance, and change our HDR processing, either maximizing our dynamic range or delivering a more HDR style shot. Again, professional photographers aren't tweaking all these settings with every shot. They might change one or two to match the scene in front of them, and then they take photos until those conditions change. But the best part of program mode is the larger exposure dial on the top right. If you want to make a photo darker or brighter, you slide this dial and it makes the adjustments for you. We can make these exposure changes on almost any phone by tapping to focus and then sliding a fiddly little slider. But instead of such a tiny and delicate exposure slider on your screen, where you could tap and miss focus, the focus and exposure controls are separated on a Sony. In our screen sharing example so far, what we've shown comes from half pressing the hardware shutter button, but we can also tap on the screen like other phones. This little indicator box pops up and the phone will track that item until you touch the focus release button on the viewfinder or you tap to focus on something else. It's one of my favorite features on a Pixel, that subject tracking. You tap and then make an adjustment to your frame and you don't have to make other focus adjustments. The phone tracks your subject and it allows the photographer to pay attention to the rest of their frame. Similar to other mirrorless cameras, we have a shutter speed priority mode. Here we can prime the camera for the shutter speed we need. This is great for long exposures or for capturing fast action. And while we focus on the shutter speed, the camera can control everything else. Or we can also go full manual mode and control every aspect of our exposure. I honestly don't shoot full manual that often, but when I need it, it's great to have. Now, you see, the people who complain about Sony's being so complicated aren't really fairly comparing the Sony camera to iPhone-style camera apps. Manual mode is a deliberate mode to be in and serves a specific purpose where you know what the photo conditions will be before you hit the shutter. 
If you're in a situation where the lighting or other conditions might take you by surprise, you can slide back to program or auto mode and let the camera make those adjustments for you. It's just like any other phone. The great thing about a more professional style camera app, we get some discrete options for basic controls. Now we're all familiar with pinch to zoom, and we can pinch our viewfinder to crop in and out. But if we want something more precise, we use this focal length dial to line up a specific equivalent focal length. New for this camera app, I'm so excited to see focus peaking on a Sony. This is where the camera will draw an outline around objects in focus. Sony autofocus is the best in the game, and it's incredible at tracking faces and eyeballs, but sometimes you need to force focus on a specific part of your frame. Now we get a visual confirmation of exactly where that focus is. Again, this all might seem overwhelming at first glance, but there is one more trick in the Photo Pro app where you can slide to basic mode, which is a little more familiar for people coming from other phone cameras. It's still a Sony flavor of a basic mode, but the pieces should be recognizable. There's a shutter button on the screen. The camera's zoom range is on the right-hand side. A toggle to shoot photos or videos, and a toggle to swap to the front-facing camera. Instead of a mode slider, we have a settings slider. And thankfully, even when shooting video, very little of our viewfinder is blocked by controls on screen. For the folks who need that streamlined phone camera, this is one of the cleanest ways to take the phone out of your pocket, shoot a photo, and put phone back in pocket. In Photo Pro, we can tell the Xperia to remember our last used mode, so launching Photo Pro again should return to this basic mode in between uses. I love this layout. The app gets out of your way, and it's really good at feeding you relevant information to help you quickly adjust your shot. It's not about making a phone more complicated just to be complicated, it's about borrowing the features that work on mirrorless cameras and finding analogous settings for a phone. Which brings us to Video Pro. I find it somewhat uncommon to open a camera app and start framing a photograph and then think, oh, I need to shoot a video instead, and then swipe over to a video mode and shoot a video. You can see how this is kind of a techie engineering solution to managing controls, but it still kind of makes sense. When you want to shoot a photo, you have Photo Pro. When you want to shoot a video, you have Video Pro. When you're in each app, you can focus on that specific content. Video Pro follows a similar philosophy. Keep the viewfinder as free of clutter as we can and move controls to the side of the screen. This is one of the things that makes a Sony fun. The really tall aspect ratio display gives us a terrific workspace to include a full 16x9 video viewfinder and still have plenty of space for other controls. It might be a little less familiar, but this layout makes a lot of sense after a very little practice. On the right panel, we can quickly toggle full auto, switch to our selfie camera, or lock down our settings. For autofocus, we can either shoot full auto or dial in manual focus with focus peaking. We can tap the screen for object tracking, but only at 30 frames per second or lower. I tend to mostly shoot at 60 FPS, but I genuinely haven't had many issues with the Sony focusing on what I want in a vlog or another product video. Next to the manual focus slider is a zoom slider. This is a variable speed slider, so if you want a fast zoom or a slow zoom, you can slide the speed here. Or you can use the Xperia volume rocker to zoom for a hardware control. Video is a different animal than photography, and our other more manual controls are buried in a two-page menu. This is one aspect that makes a Sony a little more fiddly than other phones, but again, I have to repeat, you're only going to these controls when you need to. If you shoot full auto, the phone can tackle all of this for you, just like any other phone. You jump into this menu, adjust a couple settings, and then get back to shooting. We're not regularly tweaking things in this menu, despite how difficult other reviewers make these controls seem. Like resolution. How often do you need to change between 1080p or 4K? You set it once, and then you jump out of this menu. The main thing I return to in this menu is what lens I'm using. At 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you can't auto-switch lenses, so I have to tap in, switch, and then shoot. But that's about the extent of my distraction in the moment. 
At 24 or 30 frames per second, we can use seamless zoom. Now the entire zoom range of all three cameras can be used in one video clip, and we can have face and object tracking in our video. Like a proper camera, we can dig into some really specific aspects for our content, switching between standard dynamic range or the S Cinetone for color grading. There's also an HLG option for more colorful HDR style video. Also new for the Xperia 1 Mark V is a two-stage video stabilization. Sony's did not used to stabilize at 60 FPS, but now we can. Going down to 30 FPS, we can use standard or higher quality stabilization. It's not quite as dramatic as other phones' sports stabilization modes, but it's pretty close and can still be used while shooting 4K video. Then on page 2 of our menu, we have all the exposure controls, white balance, ISO, shutter speed, face tracking, and our microphone volume. New for this panel, Sony has the product showcase option, where the autofocus will quickly switch from someone's face to a product held up closer to the cameras. As a handy trick, the guides at the bottom of the viewfinder can also be tapped as quick toggle options to get you to a specific setting. Switch white balance or adjust mic volume, it's a shortcut that takes you directly to that option. For both Photo Pro and Video Pro, we now have orientation-aware menus. The entire apps rotate, and in Photo Pro, we get an on-screen shutter button. If you prefer the more camera-like static menus, you can lock orientation and use this like previous generation Xperia's. And lastly, we shouldn't forget about Cinema Pro. Lots of phones are adding movie modes or cinema modes where we crop to get a cinema-wide aspect ratio. Xperia's have a whole standalone app to focus on that kind of content creation. It's similar to Video Pro, with the same right-side panel for options and settings, but it's a little simpler for this one specific kind of content capture, only one menu page of settings to control. The video is organized by project, so once you specify resolution and shutter speed, everything you shoot for that project is saved in a specific folder, and you can go back to older projects to quickly restore project settings. The look menu dials in specific color settings that can help match footage to other cinema cameras or shortcut the color grading process, switching lenses, adjusting white balance, or controlling ISO. I personally enjoy how the shutter speed is described in degrees instead of fractions of a second. That's a uniquely cinema-style conversation which depends on the frame rate and the exposure time of each video frame. Even in the most granular and manual camera app, we still get options to toggle auto settings. We can let the camera decide exposure and white balance for us. And in the focus menu, we get manual or autofocus, but we also get this great focus rack. The user defines two specific focus points and an option for how long it takes to travel from one point to the other. A good focus rack can be dramatic, and it's not a gimped auto version of this idea which only reacts to movement from an actor. The user can dial in exactly where and how the rack should work. Lastly, for Cinema Pro, we haven't gotten a lot of updates for this mode. There's really no point in doing an orientation-aware mode for such a skinny aspect ratio, but we do benefit from focus peaking to even better nail down our critical focus. And that's about where we're going to wrap this tour up. You can really see the inspiration from the Sony Alpha camera division. Sony smartphones are imaging monsters. The Xperia line stands as one of the most feature-complete professional camera experiences available today. Even for that higher-level use, though, I would not be intimidated against trying one. The main issue we always face with devices like this is familiarity. The camera apps here are certainly less familiar to folks who have used iPhone or Pixel-style camera apps, but anyone curious enough to try it out, even for a short test drive, should quickly be able to find those options that complement their style of photography. That's the most important part of a camera conversation and the thing that often gets lost in smartphone camera reviews. A truly professional solution is not more complicated just to be more complicated. These apps aren't here to be a barrier against people giving them a try. A professional tool should adapt to the user, and you can make the camera experience here as complicated or as simple as you want to shoot. When we look at competitors in the smartphone market, a more streamlined camera app can only be used the way the manufacturer wants you to use it. 
and Xperia can be more streamlined or more detailed, and the user decides what they want for any given situation. That's why I love shooting on Xperia's. I hope you've enjoyed this tour through the Xperia 1 Mark V camera apps. I'll have plenty more to say about the phone with a few more samples and a few more tests, so stay tuned. It's already one of my favorite phones of the year. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are clicking links in the video description, dropping great comments and questions, visiting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. Patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe and they get exclusive access to my camera deep dive reviews after I've had a chance to really dig into a phone camera. They're basically the coolest, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet? I host my podcast on Twitch. I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons and sharing photos on the Flickr, and a little less these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.